Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of This Week in Philadelphia Sports where, as you might have guessed it, we go over everything that's happened this week in Philadelphia Sports. Again. If you are new to this channel, congratulations on being selected number 21 overall in the 2020 NFL Draft by myself representing the Philadelphia Eagles. You're now our new starting wide receiver. I'm the quarterback. I'm slinging you daily Eagles content. We're talking mock draft, film breakdown, scouting profiles, prospect rankings, and so much more. I'm throwing it up to you on a deep bomb, and I'm just asking you to come down with that subscribe catch. If you could subscribe to this channel, join our offense. It will be amazing. Do not make me trade you to Dallas, all right? I, I won't be happy. We are coming off an emotional Sunday evening. Andy Reid and the Kansas City. Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. Super Patrick Mahomes gets his first ring, but what about Andy Reid, a man whose legacy in Philadelphia will never be forgotten, finally getting that Super Bowl ring. It's been such a long time. It has been 15 years since that fateful day where he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl and the puking and the spying and it all went a bit wrong. But after so much playoff heartbreak, Andy Reid finally gets a ring. And you know what? There's a lot of debate at the minute on social media as to how happy Eagles Eagles fans can or can't or should or shouldn't be about Andy Reid winning the Super Bowl. And do you know what? I'm jubilated for him. I could not be happier for a man that I grew up watching coach my favourite football team. Like, fair enough for him to go on and watch him succeed. It's like coming out of a relationship where it was a mutual ending. You go into a better situation and you just want your ex to be happy as well. There's no hard feelings. You still listen to Marvin's room occasionally, but you want to see him thrive. And now they've gone and tied the knot. They've got married. You couldn't be happier. He wasn't the only former Eagle to win a Super Bowl. Obviously, LeSean McCoy got himself a Super Bowl ring as well. But there's one man who I think will go eternally underappreciated, and that's Stefan Wisniewski, the starting left guard for the Eagles during their own Super Bowl win two years ago. His journey itself is kind of remarkable. He was the starting left guard. Then, you may not remember this, but midway through 2018, when the offensive line was playing dire, okay, and I'd say the only two consistent players at that time were Jason Kelsey and Stefan Wisniewski, you can't really bench one of the key tackles because reputation. Znivski kind of became the scapegoat and was benched. And since then, Isaac Sayamalo has held down the starting role. And Wisniewski was never given the long-term extension for which he originally wanted. That's why he joined the Eagles originally. That prove-it deal became another prove-it deal, which became him then going, Nah, you know what? I'll take it elsewhere. I'm going to go free agency. So then he catches on with the Chiefs, becomes their starting left guard, and wins a Super Bowl. So fair play to him. Do you know what? Again, it may not be the perfect fit in Philadelphia, but I'm very happy that Wisniewski has got a second Super Bowl ring because he's played really well this season. But they weren't the only ones that were happy. I've got a slight headache today. And for those of you that were following me on Twitter, you'll understand why. We were selected along with Crossing Broad to take part in the Bet America Playoff Pick'em competition where myself, Liam Jenkins and Kyle Scott would go head to head in selecting betting picks for every single one of the NFL playoff games all the way through to the Super Bowl. With the grand prize being $1,000. Now me being the gambling degenerate I am, I couldn't resist such a challenge. And I was, I was fairly confident that I could bring home the bag for the boys. And then on Sunday night, we had a one point lead. We'd both selected the under and I'd gone with KC. Meaning all I had to do was bring the bag home. Patrick Mahomes got it done. And the Philly Sports Network group chat was sort of like this after the game. I may or may not have bought champagne prematurely, but we'll we'll ignore that. So because we've won, guys, what I want to do is give you some of that money as well in the way of merchandise, all right? Let's merchandise. You know I love doing giveaways, guys, so if this video hits 300 likes, we will give away a Philly Sports Network hoodie. A hoodie, that's why not a t-shirt, a hoodie to a random commenter down below. So turn that grey thumb blue, drop your opinions on today's video down below, and you may just come away with something. But now we officially hit the reset button on the NFL season, and we look forward to the future. The combine is on the horizon, we've got free agency a few weeks away, and then, of course, the NFL draft. And the Eagles have got some interesting decisions to make between now and then. But before they even think about players, they've got to finalise personnel. And there are some theories out there that the Eagles are looking to potentially 
try and snag away one of the Super Bowl coordinators. Now, the Eagles haven't actually requested an interview with current Kansas City Chiefs quarterback coach Mike Kafka. I find really interesting. We know the ties he has to the city of Philadelphia. We know the journey he's gone down thanks to our video ranking the top five candidates to replace Mike Groh. And I did find this fairly interesting. So, I don't know. I could see a situation where maybe they do go with Press Taylor, as much as I'd hate it. As offensive coordinator, they've apparently given him an interview and then bring in Kafka almost across, like just a linear move under Doug Peterson to help Carson Wentz. I could see that happening. Although he can cross one off the list because Mike LaFleur is going nowhere, so that's not great. But it's the wide receivers coach that I think is still carrying the most weight here. The Eagles are looking for their fifth coach in as many years, and as I said on Friday, we don't really know where they're looking right now. Could they turn to a San Francisco or a Kansas City, or are they looking at the guy from Vanderbilt who is tied with Jim Caldwell. Only time will tell, but I broke that down on Friday. If you want to see a lot more on him and the current situation, go over and look at that video. And again, as I also said on Friday, I've been told by a source very close to the situation that the Eagles have already settled on their defensive line coach. It will be Matt Burke. And I'm not a fan of the move. We'll get into that if it is officially announced. I mean, it, it could still change, but as far as I'm aware, that is the plan moving forward. They're going to announce all the moves as a group towards the end of this next week. And we'll see. But if it is Matt Burke, someone that hasn't ever coached a defensive line, that has only had experience as a linebacker coach formerly, and basically been a Jim Schwartz disciple following him wherever he goes, I'm not sold on it in one way, but I do like the fact that by now he's surely going to have an idea of what's expected from the line, what's needed from the line, and how to get the most out of them. After they finally know all the positional coaches and coordinators, and whether or not they'll even have an offensive coordinator, or do what San Francisco do, and just let Shanahan call the plays while there's a pass game and a run game coordinator, considering that obviously Juice Staley is already the run game coordinator. Then attention turns to free agency, then attention turns to the draft. Who stays, who goes, who potentially potentially could be candidates to be brought in. Are there going to be veterans? Will it be someone like a Byron Jones? Only time will tell. But we've got plenty of content covering all of that coming up over the next few weeks, so make sure you stay locked into Philly Sports Net, where we're going to be bringing you as much content as you can physically handle. On to the Philadelphia Flyers, and should I say the wildcard Philadelphia Flyers. They currently occupy the second wildcard spot in their conference, and as of right now, they're sixth in the Metro, which isn't bad. They're coming off of a nice win over the Avalanche, where I guess you could say a lion roared. Sorry, sorry. And now you've got 26-year-old Shane Gostis Bear back on the horizon of returning after missing some key time due to injury. He may not have been the most consistent this year, but he's currently sixth on the list of all-time scoring defensemen in the franchise. So if you need a boost on that back end, especially as this grueling slog against Metro opponents starts to hone in, then this is a great time to get an effective two-way player back in the mix. 6-2-2 two two in their last 10. They're red hot right now. Kevin Hayes is looking like an absolutely brilliant acquisition. And as he should... For the amount of money and the length of the contract, it's seven years, $50 million. But I think this team is poised to make their return to the NHL playoffs, and that's an exciting prospect. As for the Philadelphia 76ers, they had a chance to sweep the Boston Celtics for the first time in nearly 20 years, and surely they could get it done. Surely they could go in and make an impact, and they didn't, so... That happened. Al Horford, meanwhile, has been absolutely dreadful. There have been there have been rumours about trades and Mike Scott potentially leaving, and I don't know where to look at the moment. They're six and four in the last ten. They're sick in the Eastern Conference. There's a lot of work to do for this Sixers team. It's been amazing seeing Ben Simmons, as we said last week, take over that leadership role, but we still need to see more from them. Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks sorted them out. Then you've got the Celtics blowing them out. You've just got to hope they can get back on track against Jimmy Butler and the. Oh, God, it's happening again. It's fine. Everything's fine, lads. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And finally, the Philadelphia Union's preseason got underway. They are currently 1-1 one and one in close scrimmages. So I would have loved to do watch-alongs for those matches, but they're closed in scrimmages, so I can't. That doesn't mean we're not bringing you content. We do now have a Twitch channel, which you can follow down below. Friday, I play football manager. We're doing a Philadelphia Union save, trying to take them to the top of MLS Heights in... There have been some interesting moments along the way, to say the least. Tap the heart. Right, is that what I say, is it? I say tap the heart. Oh! <laughs> the great... <laughs> right. The... <laughs> Saving everything. And we are struggling. No! No! 
happening right now because the game thinks I'm 23. I think I'm 24. I'm gonna have to legitimately. I'm gonna have to count my own age. I think I'm 25 this year. That is clinical. But we're going to have some fun stuff coming over the next week, including a look back at Chip Kelly's final 2015 draft class, the top five free agent wide receivers prospects since you guys love the cornerback one, and maybe, just maybe, some draft content as well. If you enjoyed it, make sure you stick around. From myself, Liam Jenkins, I'll see you soon.